can you bring new customers to your business or how can you put more close to you, more engage your actual customers? Building a community around your brand could be a nice question and also not as expensive as other marketing actions that you may take. And also, I believe, and also the, <laughs> the sir that will join me in a while, we do believe that building a community around our brands, it's a really nice way to engage and to get our customers to love us. And it's Valentine's Day, so I believe, and I made this Purposely, I I booked <laughs> this conversation in, <laughs> in the 14th because I believe that even though some people they say, oh, these brands, I don't, I'm not, I don't believe in brands and I don't like them, whatever. I believe there's some kind of love between brands and customers, which at some point. They could be called lovers as well. But let me bring the guest because I think he already ate the two cookies I left there. <laughs> Mark, welcome back. It's a pleasure to have you here again. Uh, I just want to tell everybody, there are no cookies. <laughs> he misled me. He misled you. There are no cookies in the basement. <laughs> and there was there is no basement as well. <laughs> no basement either. <laughs> so, Mark, it's a huge pleasure and a huge honor to have you. Thank you so much. If you don't mind to introduce yourself, even though I believe most of the people know you really well, and then we can go into this conversation. Well, first of all, I just want to tell you how delighted I am to to be here. You know, I I do a lot of different interviews, but I've always remembered you as being one of my favorites anywhere in the world. So thank you so much. I just love your energy and your joy. And it's so much fun for me to, to be here. So I am a marketing strategy consultant. I teach at a big university in, um, in America. I teach digital marketing at, a, at the graduate level. I'm a keynote speaker. Uh, which is a lot of fun. I get to go all over the world giving speeches. And I'm the author of, of 10 books. So the book we're going to talk about today is special because it's, it's, it's number 10. But, you know, when I write a book, you know, I don't, it might seem weird, Marco, but I, mean, I don't have a plan to write a book. I might not ever write another one. I mean, for me, it's, it's such a big project and such a big risk that I know I've got to be solving a significant problem for the world when I write a book. So um, I think, uh, you know, I'm onto something big uh, with this book. I think it's a big idea and I'm glad to be with you here today. Thank you so much. And you put me on my shoulders. So a big responsibility. <laughs> so let me see if I can handle it. <laughs> So we already have people from Brazil, Arnaldo, bem-vindo, and also from uh, England. Welcome, Stephen. So you mentioned uh, you. It, this is the tenth book, and a little bird told me that some ideas from this book was kind of written down in the marketing rebellion. This uh, does this happens often that. Some idea that you just wrote in a previous book, being here in your brain, Mark, we need to talk, we need to talk. <laughs> well, absolutely. I, I think if you read my first book and you just read my books in order, it shows how my mind is expanding. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, so I think over the last 11 or 12 years, Marco, the, the trajectory of my career has been exploring how do we stand out in this world? How can we be heard? How can we be seen? Isn't that a priority for every business today, every marketer today? So this began 
12 years ago where I had this observation that power in the world was changing. You know, 12 years ago, how would we ever be known in, in the world? We'd have to be on television or we'd have to be in the newspaper. And power was shifting now that we had the internet and social media. And I, I had this idea that we that influence in the world was shifting from all these big television networks to, to us. We had this ability to publish. And so I wrote the first book ever on influencer marketing. And then I wrote books on how to create co content. And then everybody was doing it. There was too much content. So we could figure out, okay, how do we solve this problem? Now there's too much content. How do we activate our content? That became the content code. Now, how do we do that as an individual? That became my book on personal branding, known. How, how does this affect companies and brands? The world is different now. That became marketing rebellion. Uh, if, you're, if we're doing our best work and we're still not standing out, how do we create new momentum? That became cum cumulative advantage. Now, as you hinted from your little birdie on your shoulder, <laughs> uh, every time someone says, I, ha I heard from this little bird, it makes me scared. It's like... <laughs> 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 well, in, in Portugal, there's some strange things. <laughs> but there was a, cha a chapter in Marketing Rebellion. Uh, Marketing Rebellion is a wake-up call. You know, it, it, Marketing Rebellion is like most marketers today, they're, they're, they're like, they're iterative. They're, they want to learn. They want to do a little bit better on their Facebook ads. They want to do a little bit better on their SEO. Meanwhile, our customers have the accumulated knowledge of the human race in their in the palm of their hands they can go ask chat gpt for anything they want and they expect something more from our companies and our marketing so marketing rebellion was a wake up call and there was a chapter in that book that predicted belonging and community would become a significant part of the marketing portfolio in the future one year after I wrote Marketing Rebellion, the pandemic hit. And people started telling me, all these things you predicted in your book are coming true. And I knew that idea about belonging and community was probably the most significant idea, the most significant prediction in that book. And I knew it probably needed its own book. And so that's what belonging to the brand is about is, and I, I sort of boldly proclaim in the subtitle, why community is the last great marketing strategy. So you're right, Marco. It, 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 there is a connection between my books as I evolve, as my thinking evolves, as I, as I see what's coming next. I, need, I have this, I have a, a desperation to get my ideas out into the world to help people. Absolutely, absolutely. And we have some other people joining and we have a community here. <laughs> and also Great. Alberto, Joanna as well. Thank you so much for stopping by. And let me start with one of the companies you mentioned on your book. And for me, it's an iconic brand. I don't think there's any other company with such a feeling of belonging as that one. And the thing is, they are not even an example as how we like to say you know, in the marketing books, we should be putting our coins in quality, doing amazing stuff. And the thing is, this is not even by far the best, uh, how can I say, perfectionate uh, brand in the market. I know, probably you already know about which brand I'm talking about, mm -hmm. Harley Davidson. Mm -hmm. They are not by far, as as far as I know, I'm not a specialist on bikes, but for instance, Japanese bikes, they tend to be better. Yes. But the thing is, there's, and for instance, if I had to buy a bike, it would be a Harley. Yeah, and don't ask me why. <laughs> I, know, I know why. There's only one reason: because you want to be a badass. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe this is the missing thing to become That's the missing you know, thing. Badass. Everybody knows that about you. 
Marco. The last, the the missing link is the bike. You got to have. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> What do yeah. you have to so, tell so, about this? So here's this. the idea. So here's the idea. So, and and I'm glad you brought that up because Harley Davidson, I think, is is something that everybody can can relate to. Yeah. Now, here in America, I don't know what it's like there in Portugal and in Europe, but but here in America, when people sell cars, they have deals, they have events, they have sales. They have big ads on TV. The boss is gone. We're going crazy. Come to our lot today and buy a car. Now, Harley Davidson doesn't do anything like that. They sell transportation, especially in Europe in the big cities. You know, motorbikes and scooters are a basic way to get around much more than even America. But, but Harley Davidson sells transportation, but they never have to do that. Why? Because Harley Davidson is a feeling. Harley Davidson is, is a community. Uh, here in America, they have this event every year where Harley riders ride out to this little town in, in a state called South Dakota for, for, for a weekend. The Harley Davidson community is the biggest city in the state. There's so many Harley riders there. And... And so the, the purpose of this community, the community begins with purpose. That's why community is different than an audience. An audience is great. Your audience is great. They have an emotional connection to you. You mean something to them. That's amazing. But it's also a bit of a cult of personality. If you go away, your show goes away, the audience goes away. A community is not linked to a person or a show, a community is linked to each other. So number one, there's communion. People know each other. Harley Davidson, people go on rides together. Every city here in America has a Harley Davidson club. H-O-G, Harley Owners Group, HOG, right? They go on rides together. We see them all the time in our cities. So number two, they, number, number one, they know each other. Number two, they're united by some purpose. Really, Harley Davidson, you know, the, 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 the purpose of Harley Davidson, as I explained in my book, is this is quite amazing. They say, we want our, our customers to follow their dreams. We want to help customers fulfill their dreams through the motorcycle lifestyle. It's not about hitting a quarterly sales goal. It's like you said, the design of the motorcycle, it might not be the best, but everything they do in that company, every single thing they do is to help you fulfill your dreams. Let me tell you a story from my own personal life. I don't know if I've ever, I don't know if I've ever even told this story before. I used to work for a company and, and I got to visit Harley Davidson. And I got, I, I think it was like the grandson of one of the founders of the company is still running the company. So we had this idea. We had created this new product. It's this coating for the metal that resists dirt. Now think of, um, this is amazing. You could coat these, the metal parts on Harley Davidson and it would resist oil, and soil from the roads, and that bike would also always look shiny and beautiful. And here's what they told us. This is how people connect organically with their motorcycles. They love to clean their bikes. We don't want to resist dirt. If we resist dirt, it ruins everything. People love, they touch their bikes. They clean their bikes. <laughs> we want them to clean their bikes. That's part of the, that's part of how we serve our customers. So it's like, oh my gosh, this company is just amazing. So even like, it's like you said, now we probably went to a Japanese company and they said, oh, that's great. We want to make our bikes better. We're going to put that coating. But Harley Davidson knows that's not part of who they are. 
And so everything they do, they know this community so well. Everything they do supports that feeling, supports that, uh, supports that community. So that's how community is different from an audience. And that's why Harley Davidson never has to have crazy ads with sales. They don't have to because they have a community who knows them and loves them. Absolutely. And I believe that it was it should not be a good idea to have deals or sales on Harley Davidson. Mm -hmm. I believe that it was not a wise movement to do that. <laughs> right. And how and, and if they do a good job with their community, they you know they never will. Absolutely. Yes. So there's something interesting about this is the fact that no, and, and this is something that I like to point about this new wave, new wage of uh, marketing professionals. They are talking about automations, blah, blah, blah. But they don't speak about, for instance, this after selling, you know, because I don't listen to them. Now you should do this to keep your customers there, but not by funnels and this kind of things. No, actual things, human things that we do with uh, customers. Because as you said, because they know the community, they know that they like to polish with the hand the bikes and they don't want something that will make the bike shine and could be nice, but they lose this moment <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> with the bike. You know, what do it, you have to say yeah, about right. this? Yeah, well, you know, it's 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 great. You know, and somebody asked me, Marco, um, can can anybody do this? Can anybody create a community? And you know, I'm I'm one of the things about me when I give a speech or I write a book, I never want to tell people what to do. I mean, my job is to like give you a new map. So when I write Marketing Rebellion, wrote Marketing Rebellion or any of my books, I'm not saying do this, do this. <laughs> What I'm saying is look at all these new ideas. I'm giving you a new map. You're an expert. I honor you as a business professional. But have you thought about this? That's the same way this book is. So I'm not telling everybody you got to have a community. What I'm saying is this is the most overlooked Marketing opportunity in the history of marketing opportunities. Hey, look at this. Have you tried this? Because if, if you do this well, you're going to toast your competitors. They won't even know what happened to them. I'm not saying do it, but check this out. Check out this idea. Someone asked me, you know, can, can anybody do this? And here's my, I have a, a one word answer. And I don't know if this is a word that is popular in Europe, but it's amazing here in America. And that word is Yeti. Do you have that brand in Europe yet? Yeti? Not yet. <laughs> Not yet. Okay. So here's the, the, the magic of this idea. About six or seven years ago, I noticed people wearing shirts that said Yeti. Y-E-T-I. Hats. Y-E-T-I. Stickers on their computers. Y-E-T-I. And I'm, I'm thinking... Wait a minute. Isn't that an ice cooler? It's, it's an <laughs> ice cooler. Don't, right. And it is. That's what it is. It's an ice cooler. They're building <laughs> a community around an ice cooler. <laughs> I'm not kidding you. I'm not kidding you. They had no advertising for the first maybe five years of the company. I, maybe they're doing it now. I, I'm kind of, you know, lost track with, with their marketing. I probably need to study it again. But the idea is they started their company and now they are this amazing, fast growing success story. And, and this is a company that said, we are going to build products that people can really use outside. So, They build an ice cooler. You can stand on it because sometimes you need to stand on it. <laughs> uh, 
you know, and, and if something breaks, you just put it, take it off and you put the new one on because that's what you do when you need to keep going in the outdoors. So it built this whole community around these are really people that love the outdoors and, um, and they're expensive. Like some of their ice coolers are $400, $500, $600 for an ice cooler. So, but it's all built on community. So, so when people ask me, can anybody do it? I think, well, they did it for an ice cooler. <laughs> <laughs> the most boring product in the whole world. If you can do it for an ice cooler, you can probably do it for almost anything. Absolutely. Yes. And, and the thing is, and this is something that we hear often here in Portugal. Well, you know, our market is different. My company is different. Uh, yeah. I don't know about if you hear this, <laughs> like, but the thing is, or me, and, and, and another thing is, we like to innovate, but let others try it before. <laughs> and then after we will see. <laughs> well, I mean, again, I, I, when I, I, I do a lot of consulting on marketing strategy and, You know, I even have a place on my website where, where anybody can sign up for an hour of my time. You don't have to be a big business to work with me. And I, but I'm, I'm very humble, whether I work with a startup, an entrepreneur, or, you know, I've worked with some of the biggest brands in the world. And the, the answer to every question in marketing is it depends because there is no cookie cutter answer. I mean, yep. you know, every market is different. I mean, something I would do, you know, I would recommend in Portugal or someplace in Europe might be different than what is going on in America. Because I, you know, I honor the culture. I honor the the economic conditions of what's going on in the comp in the in, in, in every country. So so, you know, I, I, I do I, I do think that, um, you know, you've got to be flexible when it comes to marketing. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. And there's there's something that you And I believe this is not the first time. I think in marketing, marketing Rebellion, you somehow mentioned this as well. And I'm a true believer in this as well because we listen people often. Metrics, if you can't measure, you can't improve and blah, blah, and blah, blah. Yes, it could be true. But there's so many important things that you can't measure But at least you can, how can I say, feel that they are working on your or, <laughs> or on your behalf or against you. And you can improve them, but it's almost impossible to measure them. Like, for instance, how a community can work for you. Well, Marco, this is one of the reasons why I like talking to you, because this is so, so wise of you to like connect the dots between marketing rebellion and this book because that was a very important point in marketing rebellion and that might be the most important point in this book it's this idea of measurement and what you're saying is exactly true and i want to say like you know i'm i'm a measurement geek you know i grew up, i grew up studying under you know very famous marketing author and consultant named Peter Drucker who drilled into our heads if you can't if you can't measure it you can't manage it <laughs> <laughs> yeah something so, like that I mean, so there, I mean so look now but here's the other truth that you're hinting at in your question to me and it's this there's so many new things happening in our world that if we wait until we work on something and we can measure it, we may miss the whole opportunity. And one of the things I talk about in the book is what people are missing with the opportunity of community is to look at it through a brand marketing lens. Okay. Now, um, let, I see on your show, that you are an advocate for StreamYard. You've got a StreamYard pillow there. You've got a StreamYard shirt. So you <laughs> are someone who loves StreamYard. Now, you are a, a, a great uh, host. 
you are someone that StreamYard certainly wants to associate with. If StreamYard gives you a shirt and StreamYard gives you a pillow and you have this on your show and you talk to your guests about StreamYard and, and here I am to be on your show, I'm logging into StreamYard, I'm learning about StreamYard. Does that increase the sales of StreamYard? The answer is yes. Can you measure that? Probably not. Yes. <laughs> what's the what's the ROI of Marco having a StreamYard pillow in his show? What's the ROI? You would drive yourself crazy trying to measure that. Should StreamYard do more of that? Yes. Does it increase sales? Yes. Can we measure it? No. That's brand marketing. Okay. A coupon or an ad. If I take out an ad that says StreamYard and people click on the ad, I can measure that. That's direct marketing. It's easy to measure. And maybe we should do some of that. But having people like sponsoring a show, wearing a shirt, having a pillow, that's brand marketing. It also works, but it's really hard to measure. That's the idea behind my book. 70% of all communities are focused on transactions like customer self-service, which is perfectly fine. But that means most of the world is missing the biggest opportunity in community, which is brand marketing. What if you have a community and people are helping you create new products, create new ideas, helping you be relevant in new places in the world? What if they love what you're doing in this community so much, they're telling other people outside the community how much they love you? Can you measure that? No. Is it increasing your sales? Yes, that's brand marketing. So the idea is, can we look at community in a new way through the lens of brand marketing? It could change everything for your company. Is it easy to measure? Not necessarily. Is it, 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 you know, is it powerful? Will it help you increase sales? Yes. Now here's what I recommend. I respect companies that say, look, if we put money into marketing, we've got to get more money out. Otherwise, we're not going to do it. I understand that mindset. But here's what I want you to do. You're missing. You, you can either keep up with the changes in the world or you can measure. You probably can't do both. So take 10% of your budget or 15% of your budget and try new things like community, like other things I have in Marketing Rebellion, like word of mouth marketing, experiential marketing, some of these other types of, of ideas. I think you, you know, anybody who reads this book, I predict will understand this is a huge idea. This is a huge opportunity. And, you know, if you're in a company where you're saying, you know, we're, we're focused on coupons and advertising <laughs> and end of aisle displays, take 10% of your budget and try it. it. You know, it's not necessarily expensive to start a community. Many community platforms like LinkedIn, Facebook, Reddit, Twitter, it's free. The platform is free. That doesn't mean that it's easy. It doesn't mean it doesn't take some work to succeed, but it's also not that expensive. Absolutely. Absolutely. And the thing is, and I believe this could be one of the challenges when we kind of open our company to the community. Hmm. Couldn't be kind of risky because we may get so many options or so many insights or so many different ideas that this could go out of our hands? Yeah. Well, that's part of the, of the risk. It's also part of the opportunity. 
<laughs> and um, so let me let me let me give you an example from my own life. So I have a community called Rise. It's dedicated to the future of marketing, learning about the future marketing so we can be relevant. I invite you, Marco, to be there. Any, it's open. It's free. Anybody can be there. We have interesting people from all around the world. All you got to do is go to my website. It says community. Gives you instructions on what you need to do. Now, when I started my community, Marco, I thought, well, this is my community and this is my brand. And what I'm interested in is personal branding and public speaking and writing books. So obviously, people who come in this community, they're going to be interested in those, those things. So I started little chat rooms, personal branding and writing and speaking. And today, those are the emptiest chat rooms on my site. <laughs> because people came into the community and they said, no, we want to talk about Web3. We want to talk about the metaverse. We want to talk NFTs. We want to talk about artificial intelligence. And they went, whoop. They took me another direction. Now, that has made me a better speaker, a better writer, a better podcaster, a better consultant, a better teacher, because they're teaching me. They're taking me new ways I never even thought about before. I'm a stronger brand. I'm a more relevant brand because they're helping me. They're teaching me. So part of it is being willing to give up control. That's really hard for a lot of businesses. <laughs> I know. <laughs> we have our message that we are creating for our target personas. That's not a community. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, is it is it a risk? Well, it's a risk if you're if you if you want to keep hold on to control. Right? What I said in marketing rebellion is we're in the age where you got to give up control. You know, we don't have control. A control control used to be here is our brand. Our brand is what we tell you. That's not the way the world is today. The brand today is what people tell each other. Now, you have a choice. You can keep deluding yourself and say, <laughs> this is our brand. Or you can say, our brand is what people tell each other. Let's bring those people on board. Wouldn't it be great if we were together on this and though they, they got to experience our brand and really talk to us? And then they go outside the community and they say, you would not believe what we're doing in this community. We are creating products together. They are listening to us. They just put our ideas in one of their, you know, things. We're learning so much and we're making all these friends and it is so cool. Come join us. Wouldn't that be a better way to do things? And that that's, you know, so, you know, I, I think, Marco, we're in a world where small to medium-sized businesses are going to be the best marketers. We're in a world where the big companies, all they knew how to all they know how to do is advertising. They're, they're I don't know how they're going to win. We just had the Super Bowl in America. Mm -hmm. This is when everybody spends seven million dollars for a thirty-second ad. All right, literally, there's one day, there's one day in America where people who advertise are relevant. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm being I'm being a I'm I'm being a little fanciful here, you know. There is a place for advertising, but these big brands that depend on advertising, we just don't see those ads anymore. We see them one day a year, right? The rest of the time, what do we do? We stream our content. We stream the shows that we watch, no ads. We stream the music that we love. No ads. We listen to audiobooks. No ads. There's one day a year we love ads. That's the Super Bowl here in America. <laughs> because they are paying right Rihanna to sing. Yeah, because, they're, they're, yeah. <laughs> because all our favorite celebrities are on the ads. 
you mentioned something that it's interesting because you mentioned that the fact that you built this community will improve your skills on public speaking, podcasting, mm -hmm. whatever. And this came to another question I have to you. And let me keep it straight because this blowed my mind with all the questions I can make you around this. Because what, for instance, one of the challenges is how to market a community. Because we need to get this traction Moment, to make yeah. it. Yes. yes. But the other thing is how the community can help you kind of build this other content around it yeah uh, or the opposite how can the podcast the blog uh, whatever help you to keep the community working or to <laughs> let me keep it I'm laughing I'm laughing because you said I've got all these questions you just asked me seven questions <laughs> <laughs> Just that. Uh, <laughs> that's sneaky. That's really sneaky. <laughs> I've never had someone ask me seven questions in one sentence before. <laughs> so, well, uh, you know, but okay. So let, let's break it down a little bit. Number one, how do we start it? Every community I studied started with a few people who were just already around them. I have a friend out in, in Bournemouth, England. He, he had lunch with six people every month. And people said, these conversations are so interesting. Can I invite a friend? Now they got a table. Then they had a room. And he said, you know, let's, let's like have some events. Let's get together every month. Let's have a newsletter. Let's, you know, that's how a community starts. Usually the people are already ab around you. For you, it might be the people who show up on all of your shows, they love you the most. And you might say, you know, there's something I'm interested in accomplishing in this world. Let's accomplish it together, all right? Now, so it starts, it, it usually just smart starts with something small. The community is brought together and kept together through a purpose. We want to learn something. We want to change something. We want to create something. We want to build something. So, you know, it, it, it's how do we do something together that we can be greater than just ourselves? Now, in my community, we do experiments in the metaverse. So we have people like give speeches. We teach each other. We're learning. How do you give a presentation in the metaverse? And that, then people take screenshots of us doing, we had an art show in the metaverse. We give speeches in the metaverse. We learned how to jump in a hot tub with our clothes on in the metaverse. <laughs> and people took pictures of this and they spread it on the internet. And then people came back to me and said, that is so cool. How do I do that? Now, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not recruiting people. But people in my community are putting on these metaverse things. They're so interesting and they're so cool that people are spreading them. And now the community is growing because they want to be part of that. So that's so that kind of answers your question. How do we start? You know, it's this idea of shared purpose. It's people probably already around you. How does it grow? Well, if, you've, if you're doing things in the community that are so interesting and so unmissable. And by the way, it's not me. I haven't, I haven't organized a single event in the metaverse. It's all going, you know, with other people. There are people in my community, they want to start a podcast. They're going to do it. It's not my idea. I'm not, I, I said, fine, great. It's wonderful. Go start a podcast as long as I don't have to do any work. <laughs> <laughs> and so that's how it builds and that's how it grows. Start small build together people hear about what you're building and they want to be part of it too awesome awesome and i i want to cover this new arrivals in a while but first 
let me ask you about this because we talked about this in the backstages and I want to know because, for instance, I don't have a brand right now. I'm not thinking, well, maybe you I will do get too. but You do, yeah. Yes, well, I'm, I'm, I'm talking in abstract, not myself, <laughs> you know, but for instance, I want to kind of work my personal brand through communities. And I believe that one of the problems that people, one of the, th the mistakes they do, well, two. One, it's trying to build this personal brand just by being there. And I think you know what I mean about being there. Or they get to uh, something that Spanish, they have a nice expression to talk about this people to to call them is like they have they play the, their own drum if you know what i mean okay like they are playing look i'm great amazing so how can you like to talk about this topic as well personal branding how can we use this community going to other communities that are already built and somehow uh, drop that two cents that could be really helpful in the future Yeah. Yeah. I like that. Well, you know, I think what's, what's happening in, in my community is that um, we, we, we build this, we build these friendships that we want to support each other. And so what's happening, this is a really profound learning. When I wrote the book, you know, I spent two years, researching and writing this book. And I learned so much. It was like getting a master's degree in, in community, I think. And, and I went down these deep holes learning about the psychology of community, the sociology of community, the physical benefits, the psychological benefits. Here's one of the most amazing things I learned, that when people become friends in a community, like you say, You know, they drop into communities and they try to make connections and, you know, they might give some wisdom in the community. When people become friends in the community, that friendship and goodwill transfers to the brand. It suggests, Marco, that building a brand in the community is less about getting people to connect to you than to get people to connect to each other. Because if they connect to each other, it builds an emotional switching cost. I'm not going to leave this, this brand. If I leave this brand, I'm not going to have this community anymore. This is where my friends are. So it's like this self-sustaining thing. Now you're in this community of people and they know you and they love you and they support you. They're going to help you build your brand. Let me give you a, a, a beautiful example. Perfect example. When I was interviewing somebody for this, for my book, she just offhandedly said, well, my number one community for professional advice, about I'm a woman in business. When I have a problem in business, my community is M.M. LaFleur. Never heard of it. M.M. LaFleur is a company that sells women's clothing but it's become like a LinkedIn for women. She said, I'm almost embarrassed to say it. When I have a problem at work, I go to this clothing store. <laughs> <laughs> Now, think about the beauty of this. Think about the power of this. The intersection of purpose for M.M. Lafleur to be successful Their customers, who are women business leaders, they need to be successful. For the women business leaders to be successful, they need support on problems they face in the workplace. It comes together in one community. Yes, they talk about things in the workplace, but, but, but they also talk about clothes. And they take pictures of themselves and their latest you know, outfits or whatever. So isn't this a perfect example of the intersection of purpose of people in a community 
that are there to help each other, support each other. And you make these friendships where whatever I can do to help you, I'm going to help you. So it's it's just like this amazing thing that the, the, you're building the brand, but you're also having a positive impact on people. You're helping to heal and help and support and nurture. And believe me, my friend, the world needs that right now. Absolutely. Community. More than ever. <laughs> Community. It's more than marketing that works. It's marketing that heals. And I think that's a pretty cool thing to think about as a marketing professional. Absolutely. Absolutely. And there's something that you, there's this word resonating in my hair, the head. <laughs> Not hair. In your hair. Could be. Could be so, the little bird that was on your shoulder. Yes. Glued to your hair. <laughs> Which is uh, being relevant because this is something that I believe that we miss if we don't work properly our community because we may get too much into this automation thing and how we can build these funnels and whatever and we don't listen to our customers we don't understand these little subtle things that they are well sometimes we don't even give them the chance to talk with us because that's another situation because if we don't have this bi-directional channel opened we don't have we don't give them the chance to uh, share with us their thoughts and with that we will lose for sure relevancy 100% 100% i think that's one of the biggest you know biggest aspects of community and you know when i think about the future of marketing i look to the best managed companies in the world. My experience, Marco, is that the best managed companies do everything well. So if you look at Nike, Lego, brands that we love and admire, what are they doing with their community? Their communities, they're building new products. Lego just announced a whole new product line so this is so interesting. Many times, like for a family gathering or a holiday, it's a tradition to bring out a jigsaw puzzle. Everybody can help put together the puzzle and you can, you know, talk and chat. You leave, you come back a little bit later. Lego has created l things that you can build with Lego as a family that compete with jigsaw puzzles. It's a whole new idea a whole new product line. It was an idea of somebody in their community. And their community, the people in the community that helped build this, they're getting money from this new product. Why wouldn't they? So it's, it's exactly as you said. It gives the opportunity for the brand to listen, to get bigger ideas, to be relevant in new ways. And that is what the best brands are doing. And the thing that's magical about this is it doesn't take a million dollars to do this. Any company, any brand, even a solo entrepreneur <laughs> like me can create a, a community and realize some of these benefits. So if, if you look at what the biggest companies, I mean, it's, it's, it's one of the few things in history that, that, I can create something just like these big brands, and that can be a community. Indeed. And oh my God, th this is the thing is, you say something, and then 10 hundred ideas come into my mind. <laughs> so, because another thing that you mentioned in your book, it's about rewarding. And this is great. And I believe that for some people, just the fact that they it can, that they can be heard by the brand, it's an amazing reward. But at the same time, I believe that if the reward goes, I don't know, too much about money, for instance, 
maybe we can lose the essence of this. What do you think? Yeah, yeah. So I'm glad you, I'm, that's a great question because I, I didn't want to mislead people that, you know, I, people are only in this Lego community because they can, they can make money. I mean, the, the, the reason many people are in a community is because they, they feel like they're being heard, that it's a place that they can have status, um, that they can make new friends, they can be respected. So that's one of the interesting things that's different about being a marketing leader responsible for a community versus being a marketing leader responsible for an advertising campaign. A marketing leader in a community, your, your most important job is to create a safe and nurturing environment and dispensing status, watching for the people who are, are, who are emerging as leaders, who want to take on new things and saying, oh, great job, great job, you know, you know, you get a, you get a reward, you get an award for, you know, for, for, for doing this. Um, yeah. So it's, it, there's so many things that are different about a community than traditional marketing. Another thing that's different is that um, community uh, it, it's, it's, there's an implied social contract that if you start a community, it's not, you know, going to run out like an ad campaign, you know, an ad campaign or something you do on social media, you get the money approved, you do the campaign. When the money runs out, you start something else. But a community, it's like, okay, these are my friends. It's here today. I expect it's going to be here tomorrow. You know, most marketing is ephemeral, but a community, there's an implied, you know, social contract that this is something that is always going to be there. Absolutely, absolutely. And this will lead me to the last question. And I'm going to close my ears so <laughs> I don't come up with new ideas. <laughs> Otherwise, you have to stay here the whole day. And you mentioned in the book about these new, all these new arrivals. And lately, there's a huge amount of things happening at the same time. NFTs, uh, chat GPT. Yeah. Uh, metaverse. Mm -hmm. But let me put this a little bit, how can I say, closed? Because if people want to know more about it, go to the book. Don't get lazy. <laughs> go to the book. Don't you think that there's another risk on this? Because some people may tend to go after technology and get a little bit lazy because they think that just the fireworks will do the whole job and I just need to be here to see it. Uh, you know, I don't know. Nobody's ever asked me that question before. I think, um, yeah, it's, it's interesting. I mean, what, what I always come back to is the subtitle of marketing rebellion is the most human company wins. And I think a lot of this new technology is certainly dazzling. Um, oh, here's a perfect example that just came to mind. <laughs> I think maybe this will help answer the question. So the other day, this guy posted something on LinkedIn. Well, I saw it. I think. I think. Yeah, you see what I'm talking about? I saw it. Yes. So this guy, <laughs> see, this is cool. <laughs> see, because you and I, you know, we're friends beyond the show, right? So we follow each other. So this guy on LinkedIn says, uh, oh, I have this new thing I'm showing and I used artificial intelligence to create this whole thing to explain what I'm trying to do. So I thought, well, that's interesting. So I click on it and it's like, there's this head. He said, please join our community. It is, you." and I said, so I wrote to him, I said, well, that was really cool, but it would be a lot better if you just did it. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what you're talking about, is you get so intoxicated with the technology that you forget. Just tell people who you are and what you do. I mean, I want to see a human face. 
we still need the human connection. We will always need the human connection. That's why community is so important now because we live in this world where people are so disconnected. We long to belong. We need community. That's why the time is right now because we have all this technology distracting us, but we need that human connection. That's why I say community is the last great marketing strategy because it was the first marketing strategy. It's something that will never go away because we long to belong. Absolutely. And, and the thing is, I remember uh, a whole a whole th saying that when we tend to, for instance, when I go to the barber shop, well, I think it's easy to tell that I don't go often, but before, and he asked me, the barber, it's the usual. And I believe that that's, that's what you want to hear. <laughs> and the thing is, once one lady told me, you know, Marco, this, it's a little bit boring for me when they ask me if it's the usual. And I uh, replied to, to her, look, if that person knows you properly, he or she would know that the usual for you, it's not the usual. Like, if I know that you don't uh, want to be asked about the usual, I don't ask you about the usual. I will ask, what do you want? <laughs> mm -hmm. So with that, we came to the end. And for those of you watching, if you want to learn more about this book, please go to the link in the video description. And by the way, I will get a commission if you buy it from Amazon. And Mark, where do people can find you? Well, it's, it's easy. You can go to Businesses Grow. If you can remember Businesses Grow, you can find my podcast. We are now in our 11th year of our show. You can find my blog. You can find all my books, all my social media connections, businessesgrow.com. And by the way, I have one of your marketing companion. I have it highlighted on oh, Amazon. You. Yeah. Awesome. So people can click and subscribe as well. This is something that it's on my um, roadmap this year. <laughs> a podcast as well. Yeah. So, Mark, as usual, a pleasure, an honor to have you hear you again. Thank you so much. Hope within two years or less, I will have you here. Oh, two, years or less, we're, two years or less, we're going to meet in real life. That's our okay. Goal. Hope that that will be great. <laughs> that would be great. So, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you to all of you who are watching, don't forget, go to the video description and check new Mark book. Thank you, Arnaldo. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. And don't forget, build communities because there's where I don't. And I believe this is another misconception by these days. We measure success with money, cars, or big houses. I believe that we can measure the success with the amount of lives we change it for a better life. So with that, <laughs> I'm going to end. Tomorrow, I will be here again. Thank you so much. See you later. Bye-bye. <laughs>